But this is where I saw a watermark in the corner of the video for a Facebook page called The Mums of Truth by Jordi and Ruby. But there was a few problems because it is a private group and technically I'm not a mother and technically I may have made a few videos being a bit negative towards Ruby in the past. So the chances of me getting accepted into the group are pretty slim. So we had to come up with a new identity. <laughs> so step one, we needed a name. Now the name I've decided to go with is Diane Sky Chevy, which if you actually change the letters around a little bit, it turns out to be an anagram for Kevin Shiny Head. And that was it. Diane then went on to request to join the group and a few hours later, we were in. <laughs> Guys, 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 you're not gonna believe this. It's actually happened. After all my hard work and dedication, after all the blood, sweat and tears I put into joining my favourite group and getting my parental advice, Ruby Frank and Geordie Hildebrandt have kicked me from the group. I just don't know what to do with myself anymore. How else am I gonna know how to look after my child if he does such horrendous things like be transgender, you know? I mean, that's basically drugs. But if I were to change the circumstance and say, um, you know, this child started using drugs, started using intravenous drugs. No, no, seriousness, I think it's pretty fair to say that I'm not going to miss any advice that I've got to give in this group. But clearly my last video touched a nerve, because if you haven't seen it, I actually made a fake identity to join the eight passengers parental advice group. And if you haven't already seen that video, you probably should go over and check it, because this group is beyond terrible. And it's not even just that the advice is bad, it's genuinely disgusting. The way they judge people and they'll happily see children children's lives ruined with the advice that they give to the parents. It's actually really horrible to see and I made a video just showcasing all of that and showing how bad it actually is and then I got kicked from the group. Oh no! <laughs> now the good news is, it wasn't just me who was actually in the group. There's actually a bunch of you guys as well. <laughs> and by the way, when I actually made my original video, as you can see by the screen recording, the group had 1,900 members in it. And now at the time of recording this video, it has 4,700 members. <laughs> so the group seems to be getting bigger and bigger, and luckily for me, a lot of you guys are also on there and decided to send me a bunch of screenshots and screen recordings of stuff that's going on in the group since I've been kicked. Which, by the way, is the best way to help me out with videos. If you want to send me any screenshots or information or any topics to talk about in future videos, at Calamarkian Instagram. I check the DMs every day. But here's the thing. We're not just going to look at some other posts in the group that we haven't already spoke about. We're also going to talk about these mental fitness coaches like they try to claim they are and how we discovered that they're not exactly up to the standard that they say they are. Because they have a history of an 18-month probation and were on the verge of losing their license from the state all because they decided to scam and lie about a client which ultimately made him lose his privileges in the church and his position at BYU. What's your thoughts on that, Ruby? Here's the sad situation. In many instances, people profit off of being not humble. But before we get into all that mess, let's just take a look at some other stuff that's been happening in the group that I haven't spoke about yet. So here's an interesting video that's been captioned, My kid is lying to me. And I mean, I don't really blame him to be honest. If I was your kid, the only thing I would do is lie. Because if I was completely honest to Ruby, she'd have my bed taken away from me, food wouldn't be an option anymore, I'd be living on the streets realistically. But I probably shouldn't be making assumptions here, because the topic that Ruby talks about with this mother and her child... <gasps> It's actually quite serious. I took the computer and checked the history, and I noticed that he'd been watching a show that I have not approved for them to watch called Stranger Things 4. <laughs> Oh, he hasn't, has he? Not Stranger Things. <laughs> this on the child right now, okay? I don't even need to hear the rest of the story. That is no longer your son. <laughs> I watched a tiny portion of the episode that they've been watching, and I am horrified. In the short portion of the episode, I watched topics of gore, hardcore violence, brutality, drugs, horror, homosexuality, alcohol, and satanic imagery were heavily featured. I am so upset. <laughs> Sorry. So this can't be a serious person. I am so upset. I do not know if I should be angry at my children or myself. They know they are not to watch a TV show unless it's approved by me. However, I feel like this is my fault. The computer is taken away until further notice and I have punished my children for lying and sneaking around. Like, fucking hell. Get a grip of yourself. I mean, one of the kids is even 15 years old. Like, what is the age rating on Stranger Things? Stranger Things 4 is rated TV 14, so he is... 
quite literally okay to watch it, eh? Who would have thought? I mean, even the link below it from commonsensemedia.org literally says that it would be fine for kids 12 and up. Like, yeah, this is an overreaction already, isn't it? Now, lucky for me, the video to go along with this caption was posted to YouTube because I can, uh, no longer watch on Facebook anymore. But yeah, let's see what Ruby's reaction is to the horrible news. This mother went into the son's room to check on them. How many parents go into their children's bedrooms to check on them? Children are not entitled to privacy. I know that's a lot of pushback right there, but this is a mother who knows that privacy is not a principle. I mean, first of all, I feel like a lot of parents would check up on their kids in their rooms. Like, I don't feel like that's a very rare thing. But second of all, seeing that kids are not allowed any privacy, like, at all, like, Come on, that's a bit much, isn't it? I would like to think that everybody is entitled to a bit of privacy, but obviously Ruby lives in fucking cuckoo land, so we're not gonna get any of that anytime soon. So she's got this energy, she's got this anger, and anger, anger can be done in truth, and she doesn't know where to put this energy. Where, where do I put this? In the fucking bin will do. Like, why are you angry? You have nothing to be angry about. Like, what is going on here? Are these people real? Or should she, you know, go after the kids? and punish them. So she's like, where, where do I put all this? No, no is the answer. Do you have any advice for what I should do to improve my parenting and punish my children? Do you have any advice on how I can punish my children? What a fucking sentence. And you know what? She probably has tons of advice. She has a lot of experience after all. The reality is your children chose to lose the privilege of having your computer. That computer is yours. Even if your child earned money all summer and bought the computer with their own money, it's still yours. Eh? How does that work then? Like, you know, I'd get it if he was on the dark web or something. He'd ordered a hitman to go and get someone, but he was watching Stranger Things. When the show started, the main characters looked like this. They were children. Like, I do feel sorry for the kids, you know. It must be such a boring upbringing, but they're not gonna know any different, I guess, but... Fucking hell, like, I can't even imagine having fun. But you get the point, okay? It's just Ruby being a nutter as per usual. But let's move on to a couple of posts that I actually found where the comments are filled with responses from Ruby and Kevin Frank. Now, both the topics we're going to talk about are very similar, but here's the first one. I recently found out through an Instagram photo that my son, 16 years old, lied about going to prom with a group of his friends and actually had a date with a boy. We know the boy really well as he's been a long-term friend of my son. He has been in our home and him and his family go to church with us. I was obviously very upset at the news, obviously, and at the fact that the school would let this happen without my knowledge. It turns out some of the teachers already knew he was involved with this boy in that way and supported him. Like, God, what horrible, horrible people! This appears to have been going on for several months. A teacher told him not to listen to me when I told him he was straying from the truth when she spoke to him the day after I found out. When I confronted her about it, she said he was crying and upset that I should support him. I want to offer my son a chance to live in truth, but my husband and I do not know what to do. His teacher friends and even some family members are enabling him and he is not willing to humble himself and listen. Should I protect him from the distortion by cutting off all the people that enable him? Do I separate him from the boy? The boy's dad seems numb and when I spoke to the mum she was straight into blaming saying everything was my fault. My son already doesn't have a phone or computer and I always try to encourage him to be honest, responsible and humble and spend time talking to him. I thought this would be enough and I can't help but feel like I have somehow failed him. Is there any way he could come back from this? He has already refused to repent. How do I prevent him from from negatively impacting his younger siblings. So the first thought that goes from my head after reading this is, what the fuck? And the second thought is, I just feel so sorry for the kid. The kid's gay and the parent is like, do I literally stop him from seeing this boy? Do I stop him from seeing anyone that enables that? And starts talking about how like she's failed him as a mother and all of this stuff. Like, it's grim. Now luckily in the comments, we did have some opinions from people with brains. Like this person right here who said, no matter what you do to try to protect him, it's not gonna change the fact that he likes men. He needs to know that it's okay to love who you want to love and you're not supporting that. That will forever ruin the relationship between you to. Brilliant statement, okay? Brilliant comment. But this is, of course, where Ruby Frank decides to put in and says, Our bodies come with responsibility. Any sexual expression outside the bounds of marriage is irresponsible. Marriage between husband and wife is the principle of truth. Denying this is not humble. What do you mean that's not humble? If I sat here and said, By the way, guys, I have $10 million in the bank, I live in a mansion, I own a Ferrari, that's me being not humble and... 
also a liar. <laughs> but this has nothing to do with being humble. But don't you worry, it's not just Ruby who decides to get involved in this. We also get Kevin Frank. So he's basically responded to someone who's saying you have no right to change someone's sexuality. And he says, it is true that no person can forcibly change another person. And it is a parent's responsibility to do everything in his or her power to teach, invite, persuade, and chasten a child in truth. So you're basically saying, I can't forcibly change them, but I'm gonna give it a fucking try. <laughs> Enabling is not love and never will be. Like, what the fuck is going on here then? We also have another question here with a very similar topic about their child coming out as gay. And it even goes as far to say that I feared that he may have been corrupted by media, particularly the app TikTok, that I hear from other women in my church is propagating of homosexual lifestyle. I hold myself partly to blame for this as I allowed him free access to a smartphone since age 15. Oh God, I can't believe you do such a thing. My husband and I are both confused, but this confusion and hurt has translated into anger. He is angry not only with my son, but it is causing fights in our marriage now. I'm also aware that my 12 year old is taking all of this in too, and being exposed to the concept of homosexuality before he's really old enough to understand that that is wrong. Like this is the type of people that are in this group, just horrible, horrible, horrible individuals. Now like the last question, we do have people with a brain who are saying that sexuality is no choice, so no matter your boy deserves the love and respect he had always had. As far as principles, I'm not as educated as what to do here, but from enough a mother to you, loving your boy is key. Yet again, a very logical statement, but of course, the Frank family don't think so. The belief that we have no control of our sexuality is not true, and it is not a principle, but a popular cultural belief in today's society. This belief contradicts the principle of agency, which is that each of us always had control over our own thoughts, perceptions, and actions. But this is where it gets even worse, because someone leaves a comment saying, please be extremely loving and careful of your words and actions. Too many of our youth are lost to suicide due to harsh treatment from parents and others, which of course, again, is a very true statement. Like, I don't even know what the number of kids who has felt depressed or suicidal because their parents wouldn't accept them for who they are, but I know it's fucking high. But yet again, Ruby Frank decides to jump in and says, when an individual is suicidal, it is not because of the parents or others. That is not the truth. Like, obviously not in all cases, but how can you just say that for the whole concept of suicide? If someone feels that way because the parents aren't accepting them for who they are just because of their sexuality, then yeah. It is their fault. When an individual is suicidal, that individual is hurting and does not understand how to use their agency to choose their way out of their pain, and so they end their life. Distortion kills, not truth given from parents. So let me get this straight. Ruby just said that the reason why people take their own lives is because they have not learned to choose their way out of the pain, eh? Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? God, why didn't he just say before, Ruby? The amount of people that could just choose their way out of the pain. I'm surprised they didn't try that. But getting away from the Facebook group slightly, I did also get sent a Reddit post that had a link to an unlisted video on the Connections channel that might give us some answers as to why Ruby and Kevin are no longer speaking to the other people in their family. Because you might remember in a previous video, maybe like a month ago, we spoke about how Ruby, Kevin and their kids no longer speak to Ruby's side of the family family, her sisters, all her siblings, kids, and so on, so on. Well, just listen to this clip of Kevin talking about Ruby's side of the family. Every one of these items was, was in that dynamic. Um, the, you know, this will come up, I'm sure, several times during this workshop, but the games that we play when we're all together and we pretend to be all lovey-dovey, we pretend to be all connected and happy, and then as soon as we're apart and behind closed doors, the knives come out. And there's the blaming and the blaming and the hiding and the secrets. There's the all of the the you know saying I will do one thing and then doing another. So the breaking of commitments, the hiding of, of facts or the hiding of aspects, all all of this, all of these points that you've listed here, honestly, I think you could take one of those points and kind of make them the umbrella over all of them. And that point is control. Ah, yes. There's nothing like a 43-year-old man going to the internet to talk publicly about how much he's having troubles with his in-laws, eh? What a mature thing to do. But to be fair, I don't blame the other people in his family. Like, can you actually imagine being related to these people? Fucking hell. <laughs> that would be torture. But either way, let's move into kind of the biggest topic that I wanted to talk about today that I kind of briefly mentioned at the beginning of the video. Now, in the Mums of Truth Facebook group, we have Ruby Frank and Geordie Hildebrand. And in the last video, we actually 
had a segment talking about Jodie specifically and how her views are disgusting and how she's basically just another alternative to Ruby. And even heard how Ruby and Jodie got to know each other, that Ruby was having like no success with therapists or anyone to speak to and she found success with Jodie and she liked the way that Jodie handled things. Which obviously isn't a surprise because they both have tapped minds. But it gets even worse when you find an article like this. A porn addiction therapist has been reprimanded by the state for discussing a patient without his permission with his LDS church leaders and Brigham Young University. All of these claims made by Jordy Nan Hildebrandt were false, the man assert, but they led to his loss of privileges in the church and his ejection from BYU. So Jordy had a client as she was a porn therapist, which has later found out that she was actually just a marriage therapist, and she basically spread these lies to the church, which made the guy lose his privileges at the church and got him ejected from BYU. She lied wherever she went to further an agenda to destroy my life, said the man, who objected to bills that were as high as $2,000 a month. We came there for marriage counselling and she pulled us into her porn marathon. $2,000 a month for Geordie Hildebrand, the person who's as tapped as can be. I genuinely couldn't think of a worse way to spend your money. That has to be right up there. Hildebrand, a professional counsellor, is on probation for 18 months and must see 22 conditions or she could lose her licence. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints said Wednesday that Hildebrand is no longer on LDS Family Services referral list due to the case. And even goes on to talk about the conditions that Geordie has to meet and it says a supervisor will have to sit on videotape or audio tape at least one clinical session in a month and review 20% of her patient files. And even goes to talk about this guy's experiences of having Jordi as a marriage counsellor and it says, in those conversations, Doe said she had accused him of having serious problems but never actually diagnosed him or spent enough time with him to do so. She spent hardly any time knowing about my life, he said. She didn't want to talk about my personal goals or my progress. She would only threaten me that if I didn't have more sessions and have my wife take more sessions, the alleged addiction would destroy my life. So she basically just black blackmailed this guy into spending $2,000 a month to have her just spout a load of shit to him. And this is the person giving advice to over 4,000 mothers in the Facebook group. Like, how can she possibly give advice? Look, it really isn't a surprise that Jordi and Ruby seem to get along very well. Like, everything I find out about both these people just kind of connects them together. And it is sad to see that people are actually taking advice from these two, because... Clearly, from everything that we've seen so far, the advice isn't good. And it's not even just the fact that the advice isn't good anymore. Like, looking at their history, how could you trust them? It's so weird. But either way, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on everything we spoke about in today's video. If you did enjoy, like I said, leave a like down below, subscribe if you are new. And if you want to let me know topics to talk about in future videos like this one, let me know on Instagram. It's at Kalamaki. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye. Die.